What was that? Okay, okay, it's just you. There's nothing quite like being home alone, watching a scary movie, sitting in the dark. Reality starts to fade away and your imagination takes over. Am I sure I locked the door? Wait, what was that noise? Is there something behind that curtain? Whew, horror movies scare the crap out of us in a good way and let us explore the terrifying edge of the human psyche safely. And there might not be a better decade for truly terrifying movies than the 1970s. I'm Nostalgic Nick for Do You Remember? And today we'll be taking a look at some 70s movies that had us running screaming for mommy. Let us know in the comments how many of these you've seen. And if you enjoy this horror throwback, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. Okay, door locked, lights on, let's go. The Exorcist From the opening notes of Tubular Bells, The Exorcist's absurdly unsettling theme song, the audience slowly sinks into an eerie, otherworldly atmosphere of supernatural terror. The 1973 film stars Linda Blair as a 12-year-old girl possessed by the devil, and her attempted rescue by two priests through exorcism. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! The movie's special effects were truly horrifying. Blair projectile vomits repeatedly, spins her head in a 360, and masturbates with a crucifix. Yeah. The combination of superb acting, special effects, ominous cinematography, and source material ostensibly based on a true story made The Exorcist a blood-curdling experience and totally freaked audiences out. Upon the film's release, moviegoers frequently vomited or fainted in the theater, and there were even reports of people having heart attacks during screenings. I guess there really is no such thing as bad press because the film was a massive hit. So massive, it was probably the most successful big budget horror movie ever released at that point in time, legitimizing the genre by showing that scary movies could be both artistically amazing and extremely profitable. But what happened to Linda Blair? Well, you need to check out our forgotten child stars of the 70s to find out. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Picture the scariest thing imaginable. Is it a mute man chasing you with a chainsaw wearing a mask of human skin? Well, then you're right. And you're seeing Leatherface from 1974's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The film revolves around a group of young hitchhikers hunted by a family of insane, murderous cannibals using hammers, chainsaws, and meat hooks. In other words, horror distilled down to its purest form. This low-budget triumph was groundbreaking in a number of ways. A large, silent killer devoid of personality and the use of conventional tools as murder weapons have become cliché for horror films today. But it all started with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The film also takes place mainly during the day, unique for a genre that normally relies on darkness to heighten tension. These elements combine to make a truly terrifying movie. There's something really horrifying about being bludgeoned to death with a hammer in broad daylight. Carrie. We've all been bullied, and we've all longed to lash out against our tormentors, so it's probably a good thing we don't have super telekinetic powers. 1976's Carrie follows the story of Sissy Spacex character Carrie White, a shy girl viciously bullied by her high school classmates and psychologically tortured by her mother. Why don't you tell me, Mama? Say it. No. A raven was called sin. Ooh, woman. And the raven was called sin. After being tricked into thinking she had been named prom queen, Carrie triumphantly takes the stage, thinking that she has finally achieved the acceptance of her peers, only to then have a massive bucket of pig's blood dumped on her head in front of the whole school which honestly would be enough to set off even the most level-headed amongst us. A humiliated Carrie uses her emerging telekinetic powers to seal the exit to the gym and start a fire which burns most of her classmates alive. She then returns home in a confrontation with her mother, ends in a crucifixion, and the house burning down around the two. So much for revenge being a dish best served cold. Critic Roger Ebert described Carrie as an absolutely spellbinding horror movie, and the film remains a movie portrait of high school cruelty to this day. Alien. Imagine that you're on a spaceship 
creeping and peeking around corners, trapped in a metal coffin alone in space, millions of miles from help, just waiting for your face to get bitten off. No thank you. Directed by Ridley Scott, and boasting an all-star cast, including Sigourney Weaver and Ian Holm, Alien follows the story of a group of interplanetary long-haul truckers being hunted and killed by a terrifying space creature. Although borrowing a lot of design elements from Star Wars and 2001 A Space Odyssey, Scott wanted his movie to focus less on fantasy and more on horror. His vision was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in space. And boy, did he succeed. Alien also had Oscar-winning special effects. The famous scene where a baby alien bursts through John Hurt's chest garnered actual reactions of horror and revulsion from the cast, as they weren't told beforehand about the amount of blood and gore that would be ejected at them. Alien is a must-watch for both fans of sci-fi and horror, and for anyone who wants to see a worst-case scenario for space travel. Halloween. A group of hard-partying, promiscuous teens slowly killed off until only one virginal girl is left alive. A killer with his own deeply creepy theme song, whose perspective the audience often peers through. If this sounds like the plot of every slasher movie from the last 40 years, you'd be right. But none of them would have been possible without 1978's Halloween. John Carpenter's masterpiece pioneered all of these horror cliches, and it's safe to say that there would be no Friday the 13th, no Nightmare on Elm Street, and no Scream if Halloween hadn't paved the way. The film focuses on innocent teen babysitter Lori, Jamie Lee Curtis in her film debut, and her friends as they are slowly murdered by escaped lunatic Michael Myers. Myers is a silent, hulking menace, wearing the famous dehumanizing white mask, which was actually a William Shatner mask spray-painted white. The movie was a surprise hit, grossing over $70 million on a $300,000 budget, and turning slasher movies from a niche genre into regular box office smashes. Countless movies would copy Halloween's formula in the years to come, but none would be as terrifying and long-lasting as the original. Dawn of the Dead at first glance, slow zombies seem outdated. They aren't speed demons popularized in modern hits like Zombieland or 28 Days Later. Instead, the creature's shambolic, shuffling pace seems comical at first, because duh, I could easily just run away. But George Romero's 1978 classic, Dawn of the Dead, shows the true horror of a more deliberate zombie. The film follows a group of people barricaded inside a shopping mall during the zombie apocalypse. After the zombies inevitably break through, it becomes apparent that like a rising tide, there is no stopping these monsters, and soon they will be swept away in a flood of biting, ripping, and tearing flesh. The psychological weight of knowing their doom takes its toll, and the last two survivors are seconds away from suicide before escaping to freedom aboard a stolen helicopter. Romero's graphic depictions of humans being torn to shreds shocked and terrified moviegoers, but in a four-star review, Roger Ebert stated that, quote, no one said that art had to be in good taste. Dawn of the Dead remains a classic and always leaves audiences hungry for more. The Last House on the Left. What would you do if you were confronted by your child's killers? For a lot of parents, the first thing on their mind would be vengeance. Parental revenge has been shown countless times in movies. But in Wes Craven's 1972 The Last House on the Left, this fantasy is taken to an extreme. The movie is a harrowing tale of two teenage girls, Phyllis and Mary, accosted on the way to a concert by a gang of psychopathic escaped convicts. After brutally raping, torturing, and murdering the innocent and teens, the gang is confronted by Mary's parents, who take savage revenge upon the convicts. And so everything is tied up in a nice, neat, horribly vicious bow. Craven wanted to show the real side of violence, so he shot the film like a documentary, with a lot of close-ups and simple takes. This led to painfully realistic scenes of sadism that caused an outcry among audiences and bands in cities across the nation. In fact, the film remained banned in the UK until 2000. And two. Although hard to watch at times, The Last House on the Left certainly left its mark on the horror genre. 
All right, that's enough. Everyone can come out from under their beds now. It's just me, Nick, and I'm hardly scary at all. We just saw some of the mind-bendingly scary, most original horror movies of the 1970s. But personally, what's your favorite horror flick of the decade? Which one freaked you out the most? Let us know in the comments below. We read every one. And I know you love this video, so don't be frightened of hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel for more throwback videos. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching and good luck sleeping.